Hi, and welcome to the next instalment of the Oxford Centre for Personalised Medicine Flash Interview Series, where we talk to different individuals with important roles in personalised medicine in one way or another. Today's guest is Patrick Short, the co-founder and CEO of Sanogenetics. Patrick, hi. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and where you've come from? Yeah, great to be here. I'm I'm really glad you're doing this series. I wish something like this existed when I was a PhD student. It's great to get this kind of view across all the different career options. Um, I'm from the US originally. I moved over here to the UK about seven, seven maybe eight years ago. Uh, I studied originally math and biology, and then I moved over here to do a PhD in mathematical genomics and medicine at uh, the University of Cambridge and the Sanger Institute. And I worked with um, Matt Hurls, who um, who's uh, head of the human genetics department over there. And I worked on really large scale rare disease uh, genomics projects during my PhD doing um, statistical analysis of genetic data. Um, I, I didn't always know that I wanted to go into genetics. I originally actually wanted to study math and biology, um, but then I had a, or I, I wanted to study math and, um, and business. And then I went into a biology class that I really enjoyed. So uh, when I was an undergrad, it was right when the cost of DNA sequencing was was getting um, cheaper and cheaper. And uh, one of my professors said, you really should take a look at this whole genetics and personalized medicine thing. They're, they're looking for people who like math. Um, and, and then I, I got into it. Now I'm, after I finished my PhD, I, I started a company called Sano Genetics and I'm the, the CEO and, and co-founder there. Now we're about 20 people and based all around the, the UK, although we did just hire our first person in the US, which is exciting. Great, thank you. So more about Sanogenetics then. Why did you set up the company and what is it that you actually do? Yeah, in a nutshell, we're a software platform that helps um, both patients and researchers to connect, to accelerate the pace of personalized medicine. And the reason we started the company in the first place was actually, you know, the idea came about, it was probably 2016, 2017. There was a study about um, genetic superheroes and the concept of the study was, are there people who have um, mutations that should cause a rare genetic disease, but are actually protected from that disease? They, there's something about them that means they, they have the Huntington's variant or, or repeat, but they don't have Huntington's disease, for example. And this study set out to find those people. They looked in large scale databases for people who uh, appeared to have rare disease causing mutations, but, but were otherwise healthy. One of the big challenges of this study, though, was that they actually couldn't recontact most of these patients or most of these people because they either didn't have consent to do so or they didn't actually just have, have the, the contact information. So these people were anonymous and de-identified in a database. And, and I thought about this, and, and at the time, it seemed like um, a huge missed opportunity that there wasn't another person on the end of that data point, so to speak, because if you're that person... You'd, you'd really be interested in knowing this. Um, and also from the researcher's perspective, they couldn't verify, did the person actually have the Huntington's variant or, or other rare disease variant? Were they actually healthy or did they have the disease or, or did they have maybe a subclinical version of the disease? So we, you know, that, that was one example, which we then started to see much more widely across genomics and personalized medicine, which is we're generating very large scale data sets, but often it's very hard to recontact the individuals that are involved in that, either for trial recruitment or, or just to answer um, fundamental R&D questions. And then on the patient side, it's, it's a very analog experience to take part in research. You often don't know where your sample is, whether anything's being done, the impact you've had in research. So ultimately what, what we've decided to build and are still building today is a software platform that helps patients to have a really great experience taking part in research. They can see their impact. They can have control over how their data is being used. And for researchers to do personalized medicine research much more quickly and cost effectively. And, and really the big emphasis is on facilitating recontact studies based on genetic data. That's great. So obviously we can see the benefits of kind of having an industry side of it working with academia. But as someone from an industrial perspective, do you feel that the challenges that you face um, are different from those working in personalized medicine on, on the more clinical or academic side? Yeah, there, there are definitely differences. I think one of the things that is really clear to me today, and, and it's getting better every year, is that there, the difference between academia and industry is, is um, the gap between the two is narrowing so much. And it's now more than ever possible to jump 
in between those two worlds, I think five or, or certainly 10 years ago, you kind of had to pick a track and, um, and go down it. Uh, some of the big differences in, in industry is uh, obviously you have to uh, ultimately be developing a product or a service that, um, that you're selling and that the business makes money. So it does restrict some of the research you can do that it, it maybe isn't as, um, as blue skies or as, um, as fundamental as the research you can do in academia. Um, and so if you really love that sort of thing, academia, I think, is still the best place to do uh, research that may not have an impact for 10, 20, 30 years. Although that being said, there are, there are many companies who do invest in research that, that might not see an impact for a very long period of time. Um, ultimately, though, I think what you can get in both worlds today is exposure to really interesting science, really smart and talented people. Um, and, and yeah, I think my advice really to anyone who's a PhD postdoc scientist, otherwise thinking about this is, is you don't have to uh, choose one and commit to it for life. Pretty much um, these days, the walls between the two are much more porous. So you can try some time in industry and, and some time in academia or in, um, you know, or, or in the medical system if you're, if you're trained that way and, um, and move between the two, depending on what you like. Great. Thank you. And then, so going forward then, how important do you think it is that, say, the NHS kind of works together with industrial partners to implement personalised medicine? And how feasible is that to happen? Yeah, I, I think it, it, it's critical. The, the thing that pains me the most is when I see multiple groups doing the exact same thing in silos and not talking to one another. I think, and we see this in the UK, I think the UK is better than most countries in terms of um, the, the health system, the NHS and, and other, um, other bodies working together towards a common goal. Ultimately, it, it, um, the, everyone's got the, the same goal in mind, which is to accelerate the pace of personalized medicine and to make, you know, the, to, to make life easier for patients who are either suffering from a disease without a treatment or, or a disease which has a treatment that they're not responding to. So ultimately, we all, we all share the same goal. Um, I think in this country, all the systems are in place for really large scale collaboration. You can see it with groups like the UK Biobank and, and Genomics England, the NIHR Bioresource uh, that are already coordinating um, industry, NHS and, and academic resources at a, at a national scale. So I'm, I'm very optimistic about it. And I think the more that we have, the better. Brilliant. And finally, then, something I've been asking everyone, looking forward to the future, where do you personally see the, um, the field of personalized medicine heading in the next five to 10 years? It's a great question. I see the impact of personalized medicine as, as really being on two very different ends of the spectrum. So on one end, rare monogenic genetic diseases, we're seeing transformative therapies, both gene therapies, small molecules, gene editing, um, I think we're going to see even more of this in the next 5, 10, 20 years where diseases that previously had no treatment whatsoever uh, become completely curable by you know, incredible advances in technology. So that's a very exciting. Um, one of the very exciting aspects is, is in these transformative therapies for, for rare diseases. I think on the, the complete opposite other end of the spectrum is how we use large scale genetic data to prevent um, common complex diseases and, and maybe some rare diseases as well before they ever happen. So polygenic risk scores and other ways of using large scale genomic and, and medical data sets to identify problems or potential problems before they manifest and, and, um, and really large scale genomic prevention strategies. Those are the two most exciting areas to me and, and where I think we're seeing the, 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 we will see the biggest impact in the next five or 10 years. Thank you so much for your time today. Have you got any final comments before we finish? No, I'm really glad you're doing this and, and really happy to be a part of it. So thank you. Thank you very much.